What's going on, everybody? Chris here for Poker Savvy Plus, along with Dante. So you want to say what's up, dude? Hey, it's Jeremiah. How's it going? And we are back for the next installment of the Donkament Training Series, where Dante helps me, the tournament rookie, get better at these No Limit Texas Hold'em MTTs. In this episode, we're going to pick up where we left off in the last episode, reviewing Dante's very deep run in the Poker Stars Sunday Million, where millions are made, champions are crowned. Indeed. And I can't get past the first level. So, um, where we left off about last time was just around this area. We are, I believe, approaching the money bubble. Unfortunately, in the hand replayer format, we can't get an exact read for when that occurs, but... Um, Jared's memory serves him correctly. It was right around this point. Yeah, that's right. Because um, uh, Andrew, I remember, would fold it into the money correctly. Uh, okay. He's got two big blinds here. Andrew on right. the left. And, uh, yeah, so we're right around the money bubble. Um, do you want to kind of, for people who either didn't see the last part or want to refresh or kind of give us a rundown of what the tournament situation is like with both your chip stack, um, with right, being right around the bubble, kind of what you're thinking at this point, and, and then we'll get started with the actual review. Um. Well, just looking at the stacks at the table, we've got 16 big blinds. Um, everyone, this is pretty standard for the Sunday Million, actually, that there's only one guy at the table who's over 20 big blinds, or I guess two guys at the table. Um, pretty standard. The stacks, so average stack in this turn, it always gets really shallow just because everyone folds into the money. Um, mm -hmm. So we're... Ideally, we'd we'd have P Sims stack and and be able to raise every hand, but alas, uh, just work with what you got. Um, probably just gonna shove here with the Ace King when when it gets to us. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's that. Just take it as it goes. And and we mentioned in the last video that Andrew Baccia is a he's a winning regular at like five ten. He's a supernova elite. Um, so we, we assume, and he does play quite a few of the higher stakes tournaments as well. So he, he knows what he's doing. Um, and we kind of just assume that the rest of the people at the table don't. Right. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think if my memory serves me correctly, AT1, the player in the, I guess would be middle position here was kind of a looser player. P Sim, from what I recall, was playing a lot of hands, had a lot of chips. And other than that, the table was mostly unknowns. So... Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, and uh, let's just get through as many of these hands as we can. I'm going to speed up the replay here. So obviously, uh, you're just going to open jam with the Ace King here. Um, at what stack size would you, <clears throat> excuse me, not open jam? Would you consider raising either to induce or, um, I mean, I I don't think you're ever folding Ace King for less than you know 20 to 30 big blinds, but is there a stack size where you're not just going to open jam it here preflop? Uh, yeah, at this table. Um... I would probably just open if I had if I had like a, right around twenty big blinds. I'm since we're pretty close to the money bubble, it's it's basically like three hundred dollars in in money that you're gonna get if you survive those couple hands. Um, so I'm not really looking to induce a a shove from someone who covers, um, right? Just because the the equity that that we're gaining by getting a little bit looser action from them doesn't necessarily outweigh the equity that we're losing when we don't get them in cash. 